Today's video is part two in the series in how building owners get locked into open building management systems. In the previous video, part one, we discussed how the BACnet open protocol has nothing to do with who can or who cannot maintain your building management system. In today's video, we're gonna discuss how if you do have a multi-vendor BMS system that can be maintained by multiple companies, how building owners still get locked into one provider. And in today's video, I'm gonna use the example of Tritium Niagara. I generally try not mention BMS companies or brand names. I just don't think it's fair, but in today's video, it would just make no sense at all if I try to explain you know, company A and B and this system and that system, it wouldn't make any sense. So today we're gonna to use Tritium Niagara as an example of how a multi-vendor system can still result in the building owner getting locked in. Let's get into it. I think the best way to describe this is just to explain to you the exact journey that I went through when I started BMS Consulting. So I'd worked for BMS companies for about 15 years in three different regions, started doing consulting, and I was doing specifications for new construction projects and BMS upgrades. And when I'd read the client's brief that would say, for example, in a new construction project, what they want, mechanical, electrical, fire, hydraulic, structural, acoustics, sustainability, everything like that. Um, in the BMS section, there's normally like two sentences, and it would just say, provide a BACnet open protocol system and they would often say, they would specifically say, they want Tritium Niagara. Because in the industry in Australia, it's quite a well-known open vendor system. So I thought, well, that's great. I'll just start specifying Tritium Niagara projects. My customers will be very happy. I'll be a hero. Little did I know, I was about to go down a massive rabbit hole. So for the first project, I specified Tritium Niagara went out to tender, did tender evaluations, interviews, presentations, blah, blah, blah. And I chose my Tritium Niagara agent to do my first project. I'm very excited about it. Let me just explain to you what happened here. So this is what the outcome was. The outcome was this. We had a Tritium Niagara server, tick, multi-vendor product. We had the Tritium Niagara Jace network controller, tick, multi-vendor product. What I then realized was that when I went into the plant rooms and the electrical risers and the ceilings, and I looked in there, the field controllers were proprietary. They were BACnet, as per part one of the video, the series, but they were proprietary field controllers that only that one company was the agent for to support in my state of Victoria. And that's when I realized that, well, just saying Tritium Niagara, 90% of the time does not give you a multi-vendor product server, network controller, tick, tick, the field controller. So then I realized I need to go and find a multi-vendor field controller so I can be more specific when I specify this and I could say, I want the Niagara server, I want the Niagara JACE network controller and I want these field controllers. That was my plan. So I did a whole bunch of research and I came up with a, a very well-known open controller and I won't mention which brand it was because I ended up not going with it. So I wanted to make sure that I was right. I wasn't going to get caught out on a real job. So I phone up this company's dealer manager and I say, look, you know, I'm Brass Anderson. I'm a very important person. Please, could you lend me your technical support engineer for half a day? And they were like, yep, no problem. And then I did some research and I found a, a building in the city that had this product in. And I said to the uh, facility manager, I'm Bryce Anderson, I'm a very important person. Please can I come to your site to do a survey? Yes, you can. So me and Glenn rock up there eight o'clock in the morning. We go into site, I get the keys, go to the plant room, open the panel, and I say to Glenn, the tech support guy, who's the smartest guy in Victoria on this product, can you upload that controller, please? Gets his laptop out, plugs into the controller, looks at me and says, I can't upload this controller. I'm like, what do you mean? This is a multi-vendor controller. Why can't you upload it? And he said that with this, this product, it's so open and so amazing that if you want to, you can create your own custom modules. So if you don't like the Triller Sequencer module, you can create your own custom module. It's amazing. However, when you're doing an upload from the controller to the laptop, that custom module has to be on the laptop that you're uploading from. 
and he hasn't got the module, so he can't do the upload. And that's when I realized that with this product, you know, it would be very easy for a BMS company to either intentionally just put a little basic module in every controller so that they couldn't be uploaded, or even by accident, they could, you know, save all the modules on the server and do the right thing. But, you know, over five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years, when the server got upgraded once or twice, those files could easily be lost. They probably would be lost. Or other companies that were doing maintenance that weren't as ethical as the first company, they might remove those modules. So then I realized that this was a problem and I didn't want to use this controller moving forward. This then led me on to the next problem. So this particular product, which you know could easily be locked down, they also didn't have a VAV controller with an integral actuator built into it, the controller actuator one thing, and I, I needed that. So even if I use this particular brand, I would need to specify the server, the network controller, the main plant controllers, this product, and a different VAV controller because they didn't have what I needed. So the bottom line here was that, you know, to get an end-to-end -end completely multi-vendor solution the whole way through, you've got to be quite specific about the products that you actually couple together. And then what I realized that the issue I then had was once I'd found the perfect combination of multi-vendor products, the perfect solution, there was only two or three very small companies that actually supported this exact combination that I was putting together. And that in itself created more risk than the actual lock-in part because those small companies were not the sort of companies that I want to work with on my larger projects. And these small companies would introduce more risk than what the lock-in would introduce. And, and I saw that similar thing happen a few other times. A couple of years ago, I was engaged by an independent commissioning agent just to go and do a quality inspection on a new construction BMS project or you know building. I went down there, took lots of photos, looked at the design, you know, looked in the control panels, and I'd open the control panel, and in there I saw they were using the Niagara server, it was great. They had the Tritium Niagara Jace network control, that's great. But they had they used a different multi-vendor main plant control, like the processor module. And then instead of using the like, you know, the Niagara IO modules or using this particular main controllers IO modules they use some other third-party dumb I.O. modules. So we had the JACE open, the main controller open, and then other I.O. modules that were also open. I never saw them before. So I went back to the office, did some research, and these I.O. modules, you know, you, anybody could buy them, tick in the box. They were back net, tick in the box. It's just, they were not a product that anyone knew about. They weren't built by a BMS company, they were built by some other type of electrical company, whatever it was. And I'm looking at this panel, I'm thinking, well, all three, all three of these things are multi-vendor, so I can't complain about it. However, they've mixed three different things together, unnecessarily in my opinion, resulting in a situation that nobody else in Victoria could maintain these, this system end-to-end -end because all these I.O. modules was not something that anybody knew. They went and found something from somewhere and installed them. And I remember thinking to myself, you know, have they done this intentionally? Does this company intentionally put together such a like a weird combination of open products that nobody else could actually maintain that. And as I think I said in the first video, I might have said um, it's like a week ago, that it doesn't matter if something's multi-vendor. If it's a bit left field and no one's using it, they're not going to train themselves up on 20 different products. Um, so even though that it's like the, the tool was programmable, was the tool could be downloaded for the I.O. modules, you know, Anyone can buy it, it's back net, tick, 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 tick. It doesn't matter. No one knows what that is and they're not gonna go with the learning curve of understanding how to do that. So to quickly summarize, in part one of this video, we discussed that the open back net protocol has nothing to do with multi-vendor. In this video, we're discussing that even if you do have multi-vendor products, depending on how they're engineered, custom modules, or how they're coupled together, could indirectly by accident cause a lock-in because I don't actually think that BMS companies although I did sort of say that before generally they're not doing it on purpose it's just that this combination of products is what they think is best for their business what it costs to buy the equipment the support they get from the distributor or the dealers and you know 
the engineering tools, how efficient they are to use, how quickly they can build database and the experience of their teams. So I think that if I'm, if I'm honest with you, I think that most of the time these lock-ins occur completely by accident. They're not intentional. So here's the call to action. If you're a mechanical consultant and your customer wants an open BMS system that can be maintained by multiple different companies, multi-vendor BMS system, then you have to specifically specify the brand of the server, the network controller, and the field controllers. Another thing that you can do is you can actually go and specifically tender out to three or four companies that you know provide the exact combination of hardware that you want. I actually do a combination of both. I will specify exactly what I want and then I will go to three or four BMS companies that I trust that I know do support that exact combination that I've specified. Then there's, there's no way of having any misunderstanding. The specification is backing up exactly what I want and I'm choosing companies that are gonna provide that and I trust them, very important. Now, if you are a building owner and you want a multi-vendor BMS system, and you do, say, for example, you're doing a tender out to do an upgrade in your site and you don't have a BMS specialist consultant, which there's very few of them, and I've got a plan to fix that, you need to do this. You need to say to the BMS companies, you need to tell them, tell me exactly what products you're using for the server, the network controller, and the field controllers. Get them to, in their fee proposals, write that down exactly what it is, you know, and then if you want to have an extra layer of certainty, ask the BMS company to list out all the other BMS companies in that state or region that support that exact combination of equipment. Because it might be that they, they list out everything and it's all multi-vendor, but as you just discussed a minute ago, that combination of multi-vendor isn't supported by anybody else and you will have an indirect lock-in. So ask the BMS company, what are the products you're using and who else can support that combination of products? Because a lot of the situations, there are four or five companies that do support that. But a lot of the time, when there's a bit of smoke and mirrors or it's by accident, this is what happens. Please see in the description below for any information about what I'm up to or what we're up to. Like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.